Okay, so things are heating up in the 2016 elections. Uh, again, parties have not had their their party caucuses. They've not decided who they're going to back. But it's looking like a lot of things are could potentially happen. But it's probably going to be a, a dead heap between Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. Now, what's going to happen in that right now with projections putting libertarians at possibly getting double digits in this election, uh, maybe 11 or 12 percent, um, maximum probably 20 percent, but it's definitely higher than, let's say, the 3 percent or the 4 percent or 5 percent that, that they've been running, is that it's enough to get be uh, considered a swing vote if, if there's a close election. But remember, we're looking at a situation where the, the vote may be stolen. And if they claim it was a swing vote or if they claim it's not, it's hard to say. But if there is a double-digit turnout for the Libertarians in 2016, then a big chunk of what we're looking at is the ability to influence policy well into the next eight years, regardless of who wins or loses, and especially influence the midterm elections of 2018, because at that point, the political, the major parties are going to have to take responsibility for whatever happens. It's probably going to be something that isn't, isn't very hard to tell the truth and put a negative spin on, which means that if there's a double-digit turnout in a Libertarian Party for the presidential bid right now, and there is enough influence to affect midterm elections in 2018, it, it won't be a libertarian takeover of government by any stretch whatsoever. But it does affect things like judicial appointments, uh, court cases, other issues in swing, swing states. It tells everybody, hey, now you got to listen to us. Now we can affect your swing state elections. And you can stop people from oppressing you. It doesn't transfer enough power to, uh, uh, to rule anybody, which is kind of unlikely to happen. But it, it is enough to throw off the coercive power of one major political faction or the other and prevent them from doing majorly oppressive acts. It, it basically forces the Democrats to go into spoon-feeding us the BS without shoveling at us. And it means that the Republicans have to say, oh, crap, this could really cost us a bunch of power. We really got to uh, cater to the libertarians. And, and that's where we have to recognize that Ron Paul was, in reality, controlled opposition. So this, is, this doesn't mean a Ron Paul leadership. It means a libertarian philosophy-guided political movement, which has to work from top to bottom to influence um, domestic policy decisions uh, at every level, and be able to get into those municipal and local governments, especially judicial appointments, on liberty-related issues where you can allow uh, jury nullification, you can allow nullification of bad laws uh, without picking major fights on foreign policy, which is what the major political parties have the machinery and the resources to handle. In doing so, they can talk to talk and then not get a lot of their bullshit past the Supreme Court, or with, a, let's say, a 12% uh, libertarian should turnout in the political parties, it means that the libertarian party philosophy has to be reckoned with on a level that's equal to some of the um, uh, ethnic minorities in this country, for example, blacks or Hispanics or Asian immigrants or that sort of a thing. Where somebody has to say, wait a minute, here's another group to contend with, here's another set of interests we need to contend with, let's not pick a fight with them. So that's what I think is a good libertarian uh, policy for 2016, is try to get a double turnout, uh, double digit turnout for the presidential election, influence secondary elections, and keep those organizations intact for the midterm elections of 2018, because that's where you could really show the transition of a shift in power in this country. It's not just on making a lot of noise for a presidential election that you know you're going to lose or that might be stolen by one of the major parties, but to affect those local elections and those midterm elections in 2018. Uh, the other thing is to tell whoever gets elected that 
you could talk the talk, you know, uh, you could talk the talk, but you're not going to be able to get major freedom restricting laws and statutes past uh, the courts, because that's really going to be the last line of defense on a whole lot of stuff that all these candidates and the major parties are proposing.